Now, Baylor, they're going to pay interim head coach Jim Grove $1.25 million this season. Not, not a whole lot. Not a whole lot for a head coach. Uh, and his eight-month, he's only going to be there for eight months, guys, uh, salary ranks as the third lowest in the Big 12 ahead of salaries of uh, Iowa State's Matt Campbell, who just came from uh, Toledo, and Kansas' David Beatty. So already, they're already ahead of them. <laughs> <laughs> kind of funny, kind of funny. Not probably not. Uh, but the sixty-year-old, sixty-four-year-old Grove took over in May for former head coach Art Bryles, who was fired as we all know the school's uh, sexual assault scandal uh, that went through the university. Now, this topic came by, and this is why you got to follow me on Twitter and on Facebook. You got to be a fan of the show. Follow me on Twitter at Short Sports Show and become a fan on Facebook, the Short Sports Show. Same thing. It's all links are in the description down below. This is why you got to be a part of it because I asked, I said I was doing more YouTube videos and I was going to do more topics on the show. I'm trying to think of what to talk about. And my good friend, my high school buddy, Isaiah Vasquez, he said, what's next for Art Bryles? What is next for Art Bryles? And it's a great question. What is next for Art Bryles? I looked around and I couldn't find a thing about what is next for Art Bryles. And it got me thinking because it's easy to look at it both ways. You look at it and say, well, his career has got to be done. How can, you, how can a university hire Art Bryles and as a head coach of a football program leading these young men after he failed to do so at Baylor? And then you look at it the other side. Well, after a year of – because obviously he's not coaching this season. 2016, it's, it's – no, no, it's not happening. So, you know, it's, it's it, another way of looking at it is, well – after a year, maybe maybe he's learned a few things. Maybe he's been able to look at himself, look in the, and look in the mirror, and say, "I need to change. I got to make better decisions." And maybe he proves that to a, a different staff. Because trust me, there's going to be a staff out there that's going to want to interview him and, and possibly hire Art Bryles. And they maybe they look at it on the football standpoint, like he rose Baylor's program because Baylor historically is very bad. It, it's very bad. They may have. Usually they would go every 50 years they would suck and then one year they'd be good and then back to another 50 years of sucking. Honestly, it's been that way. And I'm not just saying TCU fan, I'm, I represent, but I mean, smarty. But it, on the other side, they might be saying, well, he could create our program to reach high pinnacles of, of football. So again, so that, that's what we're going to talk about. And, and in the end, I want to hear what you guys have to say about what's next for Art Bryles. Again, so he's going to be out for this season and Maybe he'll have time to reflect and, and, and look at the terrible decisions he made, but also look at the football side and evaluate his offense because he's a genius. He's an absolute offensive genius going forward. Now you're probably saying, who's going to want to hire him after the mess he created at Baylor? And to that say, well, that's a damn good question. But there is someone out there. Good or bad, whether you agree or not, there is someone out there. Now, uh, it, it, again, like I said earlier, it, it's easy to look at the football side of it and say, well, there's about a dozen, a, a dozen, a dozen top football program or any programs that would hire him. But the baggage that Bryles now has will follow him forever. And I mean, what school is going to want to want to have that? It's not going away. It's never going away. He is always going to be linked to not what the success he had at Baylor. But the fall that he created at Baylor University, he will always be linked. Whether you're a Baylor fan or not, there's no disagreeing with that. He will always be linked to it. Now, he could pull a Ray Rice move and, and, and say that he'll donate his entire salary, his one whatever that next year's salary would be, to an organization, but it's still not going to work for him. It might work for Ray Rice because it's been a few years, and and most people are willing to give Ray Rice a, you know, another chance, which I agree with. And I have that video uh, you guys can watch on Ray Rice. But for Art Bryles, that's, it's not going to work. It's just not going to work. It would be great at first, but then people are going to be like, uh, you, no. Now, Art Bryles, he's only 60 years old. And will be 61 by the next time he's, he coaches. And that's still a good age, a really good age for coaching. So the question of him having any gas left in the tank of, of wanting to coach and, and have the fire inside of him, that's thrown out the window. He still has the fire in him to coach again. Or at least he should. Now, here comes a few questions. Does he want to live through his son, Kendall Bryles, a.k.a. Baby Bryles? Because you know Kendall, this is his last year at Baylor, too. 
They can't. Baylor cannot give the head coaching job to Baby Bryles. It cannot. They cannot have another Bryles on the coaching staff as a head coach. It just. It can't happen for the next. You know. Maybe ten years. It, it just. They would look bad on Baylor. They could do it, but it would look very, very bad. So Kendall Bryles, Baby Bryles, he's out. He's after. He's out after this year, and he's going to be a hot name. I mean, everybody's going to want Baby Bryles. Uh, you know, again, he might kind of run into that same situation with Art, but not not too much. I think the baggage will be a little bit less on him, and teams and, and, and schools will be more willing to offer him a head coaching job. Or will there be a school who will take a chance with Art and say, let's prove them wrong, and let's build something right? Now, football-wise, there are a good amount of schools that will look at hiring Art, Art Bryles. And I'm going to throw out some names. And if I throw out your school, don't get upset. Do not get upset, okay? Just relax. Just hear me out first. Colorado, FIU, Hawaii, most of the Louisiana schools. And I'm not joking around. I'm being serious here. I'm going to wait for this one. I'm going to wait for this. I was going alphabetical. I'm going to wait on this name. Oregon State, SMU, if Chad Morris were to leave, and a lot of people are linking Chad Morris to Baylor, and then Mark Browse, <laughs> SMU, uh, UTEP, Troy, Vanderbilt, and Wake Forest, Wyoming are, 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 is another one. Those are some that just came to mind, right? When I was getting this story together, this is something that came to mind that would look past Art, Art Browse's screw up and say, "All right, let's go ahead and hire him. Hire him because a lot of these programs that I just named right here have no football history." Colorado and Hawaii might have the most out of all of those guys, and SMU before you know they you know they cheated and stuff, and a lot of these would be looking for that advantage that Art Bryles, football wise, could give them very easily. The other school I was gonna say, but I know this one's gonna get the most heat is Nebraska, and this is why it makes it's it's, it's very interesting. Now before if you're if you're a Nebraska fan, before you go on crazy and hate me, but. Listen to this. Football-wise, if Art Bryles did not have any of that baggage, as a Nebraska fan, would you want Art Bryles? And I, and it would be very hard to hear an argument from someone to say no. Because football-wise, I think a lot of people love to have Art Bryles. He's, very, he's an offensive genius. There's no doubt about it. And he created a, helped create a system and other coaches. I mean, you look at all of his assistant offensive coaches where they've gone all head coaches and have done pretty good. Bowling Green, uh, Dino Babers, where'd he go? Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Uh, he's now at Syracuse, but he was somewhere else, and he did really good. Uh, was it Bowling Green? It might have been. You know, I know there's a few others. Tulsa. Uh, there's some other spots where he's had offensive assistants go out, and they've done pretty good. They've had maybe not the win-loss, but their offensive statistics – Woo! Straight up, because no one would have thought Bowling Green would have one of the top offenses in college football. And guess what? They've had the past two years. And that's a Baylor assistant under Art Bryles. So you look at Nebraska and say, well, since their move to the Big Ten, they've sucked. They haven't, they've, they've had some nine-win seasons, but they haven't beat the big dogs and have failed to make it to the Big Ten championship. And I'm not saying calling them back to the Big 12, which would have been awesome for the Big 12 that they could, but it's not going to happen. But if Art Browse goes to Nebraska, man, you're talking about if they can get historically back to that defense that they used to have, the black shirts, and then you have an offense run by Art Browse? Woo! You, you changed up the game right there. You changed up the game at Nebraska, something they haven't seen in a very, very long time. So that's why I threw that name out there. Colorado, they've sucked. At the back tw- or the, at the Pac-12, you bring him in there, maybe it lights the fire. FIU, I mean, it, them and FAU, have, they're okay, but hey, there you go. Hawaii, it seems like every old coach always ends up going to Hawaii, so maybe they take it. Most of the Louisiana schools, every I, I think every Louisiana school is, except for LSU, that's your that, our brows could go there. Uh, I mean, you got Louisiana Tech. Tulane, a few others. I mean, it could make sense. Uh, Oregon State, I mean, I know they just hired the guy that was at Nebraska, and he's, eh, 
Not really that good. SMU, they almost hired uh, Mac Brown. I mean, what the heck? UTEP, I think they're actually probably good. Maybe I should scratch them off. They're, they've been kind of building a program there. Troy, nobody. Vanderbilt, I know they got Derek Mason. And uh, defensively, Vanderbilt's done pretty good. Offensively, eh, not so much. And this could be, a, I think that's the, out of the SEC, the most big-time school that would hire Art Bryles would be someone like Vanderbilt. Wake Forest, no one really there. And Wyoming, the guy from North Dakota State is the head coach. He hasn't worked out so much at Wyoming. So there you go. So my question is, what's next for Art Bryles? Is his career completely over? Because the mistakes that he made, it gives a lot of reason to think that his coaching career is completely over. I mean, he can't even serve as an advisor. But will some schools look past it? And there's a lot of people that think it, it, that they would. I think there are some schools that will look past it. But it's hard to think that they would and let Art Bryles lead young lives again. That's why I'm leaving it up to you guys. I think he will end up coaching in 2017 somewhere, whether that's with Baby Bryles or uh, with someone else or just by himself. Uh, but I think there is someone. I think there is some school that will hire him in the Division One ranks, the FBS level, that he will end up going to. Let me know in the comment section down below. Again, follow me on Twitter at Short Sports Show and become a fan on uh, Facebook, the Short Sports Show. Woo, ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you, it's uh, it's it's crazy. I I, I really want to hear what you guys think about it, and I don't know. Let's take a quick break. We haven't taken one yet. I don't wanna go, I don't wanna be-